a couple of years ago I wrote um, two different blog posts on how I make circuit boards and I thought I would do a video showing me uh, doing the same thing. So I recently designed a circuit board for a brushless DC motor controller and I'm going to uh, make a circuit board. In this first video I'm going to show how to uh, expose, develop, etch, and tin plate a circuit board. And in the second video I'll show how to do uh, solder mask and then I'm going to use a reflow oven to do the surface knot stuff and hand solder a few um, through hole stuff. So here goes. <clears throat> Probably going to need some copper clad board. Uh, I'm using photolithography so I need transparencies for a printer. And I've printed out the copper layer and then also the um, solder mask layer, which you can't quite see too well, but we'll get to that later. Uh, you're gonna need developer. Uh, I use um, some stuff from MG Chemicals. It's um, kind of overpriced, but anyway, that's what I use. Uh, and you mix it uh, 10 parts water to one part developer, which I already have pre-mixed. For developer, I'm gonna use ferric chloride which uh, I've had for a while. You can also use so uh, sodium persulfate or several other etchants. I'm going to tin plate the board, so I'm going to use uh, liquid tin from MG Chemicals. And then when I do the solder mask, the uh, developer for solder mask is uh, sodium carbonate, which is uh, the main ingredient in like a pH increaser for a pool or jacuzzi. And this is a pretty much a lifetime supply, but it's like $5, so who cares? <clears throat> uh, you're going to need a tub to develop and etch the board in, a little brush, and then some way to cut the copper clad board. So I'm going to use a pair of uh, tin snips. You can also use a Dremel or whatever. <clears throat> um, have a lamp and then a piece of plastic that does not block UV um, that will be used during the developing stage. So let's get to it. Alright, so the first step is to cut the copper clad board to size. Alright, so just uh, for completeness sake I happen to be using number 612 from MG Chemicals. Doesn't really matter what you're using, but I um, thought I'd show that for anyone who is confused and wants to try a known good setup. They give you an instruction sheet, which is uh, useful, but I've already read it. So there's my copper layer. And what I need to do is basically cut the board so that we have uh, just the part we need. So you just kind of mark roughly. I need to leave a bit of a margin on every edge because there's going to be some delamination. <clears throat> Especially when you're using uh, tin snips. Alright, so we've cut it roughly, and it is the size we need. So I'm going to put the unused portion back in the bag, because it is uh, sensitive to light, and although there is not film on it, you really don't want it hanging out for too long. Alright, so... That will just barely fit in my bucket. I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter on this edge to make it easier. And we still have uh, plenty of margin. Alright, so that's trash. 
now we just need to make sure that the board is not warped and we need to sand all edges uh, to make sure there aren't any burrs. If there's any burrs left over when you lay the transparency on to expose the film or to expose the um, well yeah the film that's on the board um, it will not sit flat which means you'll get a blurry exposure which is horrible if you're doing uh, surface mount stuff because you really need that um, the detail for the thin traces. So <clears throat> this board does not look like it got warped too much but you definitely want to check it's looking okay. Uh, just gonna take a sanding block and on every edge, not just the edge you cut, but on every edge, um, kind of push in a way that will uh, break off any burrs. All right, so we're now ready to uh, expose the board. So you can go ahead and mix up some developer. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the stuff that I'm using, uh, you'd want to do roughly 10 parts water to one part developer. And the developer I happen to be using is from MG Chemicals, Positive Developer. Before I pull off the protective film on here, I'm gonna start a timer for three minutes on my phone, which is uh, what I happen to use when I'm using this particular lamp. Uh, of course, when you use a different lamp, you're going to want to guess and check, uh, but I use three minutes. So, <clears throat> peel off the protective film, being careful not to touch the board. Take your mask and get it centered on there. Take your uh, sheet of plastic that is transparent to UV, which is really important. Push it down. Make sure that the uh, plastic sheet is uh, sitting flat and it's not um, blocked by part of the cardboard or anything at an angle. And now we can expose it. So I'm going to flip the uh, switch and start a three minute timer. While it's um, exposing the board, I'm going to go ahead and pour some of that developer in here. Turn off the lamp. We're done with the lamp for now. We're not going to use that again until we do the um, solder mask. So now we can develop the uh, board. So we'll just stick it in there. Make sure there's no air bubbles. And it'll take a little bit. See if I can do this without my hand getting in the way. So you just let it sit in there and you just kind of gently brush the uh, surface. And uh, I'm not sure if this is really obvious on camera, but it's starting to show up just a little bit. You'll need to do this near a sink because when it is developed, you want to wash it off with uh, cool water to stop the development process. If you uh, overdevelop, you're going to have a very thin mask and what can happen is the etchant will slightly damage the area under that mask. So it's uh, really important you don't go too far. Also if you don't develop far enough, uh, obviously you won't have um, a nice clean mask and areas won't etch where they should. So that looks about right to me. So I'm going to take it out and rinse it. So 
you can see here we have a pretty good um, mask. It's um, probably not going to show up to well, but it's a little thin right around in the middle, but it's not bad. Other than that, it looks to be um, fairly well developed. Going to uh, rinse out the bucket. And then I'll pour in some ferric chloride. Be careful not to splash, this stuff will uh, stain your shirt. And then we'll stick the board in. And just like when you're developing, make sure there's no air bubbles. I didn't warm up the uh, ferric chloride, so it's um, probably 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which means it's going to take a while to etch. So I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes just so we can uh, see how long it took. And there we go. Um, <clears throat> you'll need to uh, kind of constantly uh, rock the solution. Otherwise you're going to have um, the oxidized copper is going to kind of sit on top of the surface and it won't actually let the stuff below it etch away very well. So it's already been 15 minutes and uh, we're only about halfway done etching um, and that's kind of my fault. It would have really helped if I heated up the, uh, if I would have heated up the ferric chloride and more importantly this ferric chloride is worn out because I have used it to etch quite a bit of stuff. So it's probably going to take another 15 minutes to etch. I'm not going to bother recording another 15 minutes of this but I'll show you uh, what it looks like when we get toward the end. Here's a quick look at what the board looks like after, um, I don't know, 28 minutes or so. You can kind of see that the copper is etched away a little bit at the corners, and the rest is getting quite thin, uh, but there's uh, still quite a bit of copper left. And again, with um, new ferric chloride, and if it was a little bit warmer, this would probably all be done in 5 minutes, maybe 10 minutes at most. We're now at about the 20 minute mark, and um, it's uh, pretty close to done. Um, hopefully this will show up, but you can see most of the copper on the edges is gone. Most of the copper uh, between the traces is gone. And there's just a little bit near the top, you can kind of see right there. Hopefully. Not really. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of glare. Um, so it should be uh, finishing up pretty soon. So right now it looks like it's pretty much done. Um, I don't see any leftover copper. You should probably use uh, gloves when you reach in here, but I'm I'm not going to. So yeah, it took about 20 minutes, or no, about uh, 25, I think, which is way longer than it should have been. So yeah, use uh, fresh ferric chloride or at least heat it up. And so here we have the etched board. One way you can check to make sure you don't have any damage is with a uh, flashlight. If you uh, set it to low, there we go. And you uh, backlight the uh, board. 
you can kind of verify that there's no copper left over. <clears throat> and I'm going to do that right now. And uh, you're looking for any damaged traces, any um, copper that was left over that shouldn't be. Uh, you're almost always going to see little um, kind of dots where there is um, missing copper. And um, that's normal. A few dots here and there are fine. Just make sure you're not having any broken traces or uh, significant damage to your uh, ground plane or whatever you have going on. Alright, so it looks pretty good. And now I'm going to stick it back in some developer to um, get rid of the uh, green mask. So I poured the ferric chloride back into its bottle and uh, rinsed out the bucket. Again, be careful not to splash the ferric chloride. It will stain or damage quite a lot of stuff. So we can go ahead and pour some of the developer back in there. Stick the board in and leave it in there for uh, a little while. By now, pretty much all of that mask is uh, dissolved. But I'm going to let it sit in there for another minute or half minute just to make sure that everything's gone. Because if you have any left over when you try to tin plate it, it obviously won't tin plate very well. Alright, so that's good enough. We'll uh, rinse it off with some water. So now we have this uh, nice shiny copper board. And we'll go ahead and tin plate it. Uh, you don't really have to tin plate it. I like to do it. It offers a little bit more um, protection. You really want to do it if you're not going to um, use a solder mask. Um, <clears throat> but even if you use a solder mask, um, I like to do it because um, like the copper text I have on here, it's uh, a lot brighter and easier to read when you have uh, it tin plated and then you have the solder mask on top of it. This stuff has a fairly strong odor, so um, yeah, deal with it if you want to use it. And also try not to spill it. And this is probably the neatest process of all. So you take your board and it will almost immediately turn silver, which is kind of neat. Just like that. And the uh, documentation says to leave it in the um, solution for about I think five or ten minutes. Um, it'll build up thickness the longer you leave it in there. Uh, but it also tapers off rather quickly too, so if you leave it in for an hour it isn't going to get a whole lot thicker. Alright, so that's good enough. And again, you should probably use gloves, but uh, I'm not going to. So, I uh, just take it out, rinse it off, and clean off your hands. Alright, so that about concludes uh, part one of this video. In the next part, I will cover how to do a um, solder mask with a dry film solder mask. And then I will show um, applying solder paste and using a cheap toaster oven as a reflow oven to do the surface mount stuff. And then there's a few um, through hole items that I will, uh, I guess, make surface mount and then solder on by hand. Um, because I have a bunch of TO220 transistors and uh, 10 inch headers that are all through hole that I want to use up before I buy modern stuff. Anyway, I uh, hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. And uh, check out the next video.